Hi, in the last videos, we talked about principles of use of sleep medications, and also we talked about um, the medications like Ambien, Lunesta, and Sonata, which are the non-benzo benzoreceptor agonists that are pretty common to be used now. tell you that um, Lunesta is one of the um, medication that has been seen to have very good effect. However, it causes some side effect that um, sometimes the sleep doctors don't want to use it or stop it if it causes side effect. It can cause complex sleep behavior and patient get up, eats, drinks, and even drives while they don't have a good memory function, and they might get into dangerous situations. So let's say you had uh, Lunesta and it caused problem, or you had Ambien or Sonata. Sonata has a very short half-life. Some people want to use it the whole night, but the effect gets out after a few hours. Ambien, the same thing, but there are Ambien CR and these things that take some more time to work. Well, what do you do if you can't use Ambien, Sonata, Lunesta, and non-benzo um, receptor agonist? What do you do? So there are a lot of other things. First, we want to go back and remind everybody that you have to go back to your CBTI, change your habits. That's what heals you. Medications are for the times that that doesn't work or people have other complex situations that um, maybe just change of habit, even though it's the best thing to do, is not enough or it doesn't work. There are multiple other groups of medications. I'm not gonna talk about um, a lot about groups, but I will talk about single medications. So let's say, um, uh, the patient has advanced age and uh, use of medications like Ambien and Lunesta is not safe. Uh, what are the medications we can use? Um, my personal favorite is Mirtazapine and Trazodone. Uh, these medications uh, are used quite often for elderly. The other two very good options are low dose doxepin um, and uh, Roseram. I'm sure you are familiar with Roseram out of the um, marketing campaign that was going on a few years ago. Also for people who have substance abuse disorder or history of substance issues or addictive personality or addiction runs in the family, we wanna try not to use um, um, medications that affect the benzoreceptors. So um, doxepin and roseram are approved for this usage. However, a lot of other medications have been used for this category. Uh, gabapentin is something that psychiatrists use a lot and I use uh, quite frequently. Amitriptyline, mirtazapine, and trazodone is also options for that. So one of the options when we cannot use regular medications for sleep that are approved for sleep is to use um, groups of melatonin or melatonin agonist, that is roseram or ranaltian. Uh, melatonin I will discuss in another video with herbals and supplements, um, and it doesn't need prescription. The Rameltion is an option that is pretty good. It kicks in really fast and it hangs around in your system for hours. So you get extended um, relief uh, from insomnia. Um, this medication, if it's used with high fatty meals, um, kicks in later and also start, um, hangs around in the system later. So don't eat a um, large, meal at night if you're on Rosarum. You should not use um, Rosarum with alcohol. 
Also because of its um, pretty rapid onset of action, it's best that you go to bed um, um, right after taking the rosarum. The side effect of rosarum include sleep-related activities that I just explained. Um, so if that happens, maybe it's not a good option for you, but the chances of this side effect happen is not high. So if you remember from previous videos, um, one of the strategies that we can um, utilize to get to a good sleep is to negate the wake pressure. And orexin is one of the systems that has been targeted. There are three medications at this point that affect the, um, that, that system to decrease the amount of wakefulness. These medications are pretty good. Um, they're not very expensive. Belsondra is the most uh, well-known in America. The generic name is Sovorexant. Also, Lamborexant is another option that is uh, quite um, uh, often used. Um, personally, I use Belsondra more and I didn't use the other groups before. These medications are scheduled, so in some states you have to see the doctor every month or every three months to be able to get the medication. There is a, a condition of a sleep that is called narcolepsy. These groups are not allowed to be used for narcolepsy patient. They are supposed to be taken around 30 minutes before the sleep time. And uh, one of the issues with them is that you at least want to have a sleep opportunity around seven hours. So if you are planning to get up and go doing something before seven hours, which is seven and a half hour with its um, time to kick in, um, then it's not a good idea to take it because it's gonna cause problems with waking and sleepiness at the time of the wake. With Belsombra, we can see a sleep paralysis and also uh, sleep-related hallucinations. Um, I was telling in another video, when you wake up or when you are going to sleep, you can see something that is not true, which sometimes uh, happens. And if it happens, we would like to stop the medication. There is a group of um, antidepressant <clears throat> called um, tricyclic antidepressant that are pretty old and they're basically depression medication. A couple of their drugs are used um, for insomnia. Um, doxepin is one of them and on very low doses it stops the histamine receptor so it acts like an antihistamine but it also have more sedative effect and it, on higher doses it's for depression. Uh, uh, that medication is approved for insomnia, has a good effect and uh, especially for elderly or people who have addictive personality it's a good option. Uh, the other medication that was used in the same group is called amitriptyline. Amitriptyline or Elavil um, can be used in a variety of doses. I normally use between 10 to 40 milligram. This is a depression medication. So if the person has depression, it works. Also, it has a lot of other usage, for example, it's used for chronic pain, it's used for prevention of migraine, and it's used for some chronic dyspepsia, um, stomach symptoms. And if the patient has a comorbidity, um, we can use the same medication and get two issues taken care of. So amitriptyline is um, used quite often for these reasons. It is sedative and you use it around one hour or 40 minutes before the expected sleep time. Um, on higher doses, it can have some um, daytime effect, but it goes away. On higher doses, definitely it's sedative and it um, will interrupt the daily life with sedation. Another group of depression medication that is used for insomnia is SSRI. This is the well-known, very, very well-used medication for decades now. The addicting SSRIs are Paxil, uh, Lexapro, and Arzoloft. Um, you use them for depression or anxiety or OCD or any 
reason that we are using for psychiatric reasons. However, because they are sedating, they can double with your um, as as your sleep aid, and um, they do have a quite good effect. Some people don't get that sleepy with them. Lastly, um, uh, there are medications that are developed as anti seizures or anti um, psychotics like gabapentin, pergabalin, and uh, seroquel. In select patient, it's a medication that can also cause sedation and it can help with the sleep. If your patient are appropriate candidate, they can be tried with good effects. So um, um, gabapentin and pergabalin are mainly used for chronic neuropathic pain. So the pains that are because of the nerve pain basically, and uh, for back issues, neck issues, uh, diabetic neuropathy, and uh, inappropriate dose, they can help with the sleep. Um, the same with Seroquel, if for some reason the patient needs um, medication for psychiatric reasons, uh, irritability, psychosis, depression that needs second line medication, then Seroquel might be a very good option and it does cause sedation. Also in select patients who have substance abuse disorder, we can consider use of Seroquel. If you're still with me, I would like to really appreciate you. And please see the video that we put on the end card um, that talks about the cornerstone of treatment of insomnia, that is cognitive behavioral therapy and medication comes next and only for select patient. Thank you.